yeah, that no, that's 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 kind of like critical because I think that that's how you you know I think that as an individual artist that's how you come to know yeah. by reading to an audience or to a group of people or being in a group of people readers mm -hmm. who are say poles opposite or you know in, no, in no. some way from another it really puts you in a corner and you really have to uh, you really have to embolden uh, your identity but um, in retrospect, though, I, I think I'm, I'm doing the right thing. And I, I was speaking to uh, the Puerto Rican poet, uh, Luz Maumpierre, who lives in, uh, she lives in Florida now. And she, she was born on the island in Santurce and uh, lived in New York for a while, New England, and wrote a series of uh, very beautiful poetry uh, the Margarita poems, and there's another one which I'm not thinking of now. Anyway, she came back to New York to read at an event um, up at uh, the Cooney Grad Center, and it was all of these lesbian poets from the 70s. And the reading was, I was the only man there. Um, the reading was unbelievable. It, it was unbelievable. Um, Audre Lorde's daughter spoke. Um, they had a really, it was a really diverse crowd of women. Well, we, she and I went out uh, to get tea and dessert after the reading and to meet for the first time because we have an internet friendship. And, you know, I was telling her about the issues I was having with reformatting Panic as a, as a Latino-oriented reading series. And she's like, that's been happening for a long time. She said, my life has been war. Um, as a Latina, as a light-skinned Latina, who who is as an educated light-skinned uh -huh. Latina who sometimes isn't perceived as a Latina at first by strangers, um, and she said, "When you are when 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 you're in the when you are who we are, when you're doing the right things, you're gonna piss people off, and if you just if you just go with the flow and make everybody happy, that's not the right thing to do." She said, you're going to learn who your allies are, you're going to learn who your allies aren't. So, um, you know, I, I listen to the elders. They've already gone through all this bullshit, uh -huh. and they're still <laughs> dealing with it. Um, so I think, you know, I'm, I'm curious to see where it goes, you know. Well, that's, uh, you know, that's the adventure, man. That's the yeah. adventure. I hope, yeah. it's, you know, I hope you're having a ball, and I hope you continue to have a ball. That's one of the reasons I keep doing it. Now, that's, you know, now this is the product. <laughs> this is the product. The Best of Panic, <laughs> live from the East Village, mm -hmm. edited by Charlie Vasquez. Charlie, talk about... Um, during the course of... of curating the Panic Reading Series, I've, I've met so many writers who hadn't been published yet. Writers who hadn't even uh, written a bio, they, hadn't, they, don't, they didn't even have bios, you know, for me to read at the readings. So what I wanted to do was, um, you know, I, I've self-published before. I self-published a novel in 2004, a fiction collection in 2007, and this past year, April 2010, uh, the Rebel Satori Press published uh, my second novel, and I've, I've had stories published in various anthologies for different reasons, so I am familiar with the thrill of getting published, and I wanted, I wanted to make that happen for a lot of these people. I would say, quite fairly, half of the people in this book have never been published before, and I, I, th I felt that they were uh, deserving of that. So I took all of my experience as, an, as a writer and editor and as someone who has uh, produced books before in a very underground uh, wobbly kind of punk rock way um, just took a couple of months I, I sent out a call for submissions to everyone who uh, had participated in the series and um, uh, just over 30 people sent me material in response so what I did was I didn't I, I sequenced it in the order it was sent in to me okay so, so it has an organic is it is kind of a natural organic curve um, and it's uh, men and women, Latinos, non-Latinos, but um, I wound up with a really, really wacky collection of, of fiction, performance pieces, and poetry. 
uh, that's been featured in the series. So it's 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 uh, you know I, I did it for me as well as for them. Mm -hmm. So um, so that's that. I think it will continue to anthologize the series uh, maybe like every six months, compile the best of the previous six months, just so that this it's it stays. You know because. Um, Literary readings are—it's it, very much about the moment while it's happening. There's so much, there's so much exchange and energy, and people are tuning in, and the, the writers are are um, mining deep, deep down into themselves to uh, deliver their work. Uh, it, it's, it's a very exciting energy, but you know, 30, 40, 50 years from now, when when some of us won't be around, this is a way for that to sort of survive. You know, for people to look back and go, oh, okay, there was this reading series, you know, here's the politics, you know, here's the aesthetics, and um, there'll be something that, that lasts that will, you know, continue to, and hopefully inspire other people who do reading series to anthologize their work. It's important to publish. Right. You know, I mean, it's, it's really important to go out there and read to people and share and, and be turned on to stuff and turn to turn people on to stuff, but... Uh, I get emails all the time, you know, because I, I publicize my stuff online. Uh, I try not to be too aggressive, but I try to be extremely present. And uh, I connect with people all over the country, all over the world, and I get so many emails that are like, I so wish I lived in New York. I wish I could <laughs> see this reading. Like the Latina Panic, which yeah. you were at. I can't tell you how many emails and messages I got from girls in California, in Florida, in Mexico. Like... I can't, they, they're like, we've never heard of this happening. Seven queer Latinas, like, just letting it out, letting it happen, you know. Here we go, watch out, stand back. You know, they they had never experienced something like that, and we're so excited to hear that it was happening. Um, so, again, publishing is a way for maybe, for them to access the material that was, um, the material that was, that was read and, and performed that night. Okay, hey, well, now that, uh Everybody knows and says, well, how do I get a copy <laughs> the best of The panic. Best of Panic? Uh, so talk about that. Give those details. Okay. Because uh, I always like, you know, sort of like wait for people to grab, uh, you know, looking for a pen. You know looking for a pen and paper. <laughs> uh -huh. No, no, I'll make it, I'll make it really easy. Um, what? Talk about the series again, the reading series as well. Okay, I'm going to give them the URL for my website because there's, there's lots of information and links there uh, for people to learn more about. So not just me and what I do, but a lot of the artists that I collaborate with. Uh, my website is at uh, www.firekingpress.com. That's F I R E K I N G P R E S S dot com. One continuous word. And there you'll find. Um, links to other writers and info on, on the book projects I've done and news on upcoming readings and so forth. As for the book itself, um, it's titled The Best of Panic and my name is Charlie Vasquez, C-H-A-R-L-I-E V-A-Z Q-U-E-Z. Vasquez with an S is the more common spelling. So people always change my name. It's like, I know how to spell my name. I'm almost 40 years old. <laughs> Thank you very much. V-A-Z-Q-U-E-Z and you can find that on Amazon.com that just uploaded the other day. Um, or you can go to uh, the online resource that I published it through is createspace.com, C-R-E-A-T-E-S-P-A-C-E.com. Um, so that's how you can find me and uh, book information and so forth. And so is there anything uh, coming up that you know, you're doing um the next uh, people can run from California and get it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they got time. <laughs> well, um, I no, I mean, there's, there's going to be a reading at the end of January, um, and through my website you can you can sign up to register to receive my my blog updates, and and that's the, probably the most effective way. Um, but I'm just I'm trying to figure out ways to collaborate with like a video artist or. Um, Someone who I can pay cheaply, unfortunately. I, it's, just, it's just my reality. <laughs> this is New York. Um, to to videotape the readings would, would be really great. But unfortunately, there's all, people have all kinds of copyright issues. And uh, yeah. we've had readers who work for um, 
like government agencies and state funded things and maybe they're not completely out at work so they don't want to be videotaped right. but uh, I'll continue to anthologize as much as I can so that the work uh, continues to exist on the page well, I wish you uh, all the best and uh, all the best. All right. Well, thank you. And uh, all of that. So keep up the good work. Uh, well, and uh, you know, you'll, you'll be uh, more, I think, most importantly is just that people are getting the hang of it. So maybe out there in, you know, with all of those people thought, so I got to do this. Well, they should really? start their own reading right. series. Exactly. Start a reading series. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> It's a, it's a lot of work, but it's rewarding. I mean, you wind up meeting... There's probably more writers in your community than you think because people, you know, it's just easier to compile documents with the, you know, with uh, computers and the internet and so forth. But, um, you know, do what you can. If there's not a reading series that exists where you live right now, you know, go to a cafe, go to some cultural institute and start meeting people in your community through the internet who have similar interests go to uh, creative writing professors at your local university find other people who are into into literature and poetry and, and start to convene and you know you never know what will happen in two years it's it can be really exciting I mean some people like you and I live for that kind of thing not everyone's like that um, but if you are like that and it's not happening well, you know, all of us had to, all of us one day went, you know what? You no one's to, doing this. I'm yeah. going to do it. You go to a reading or two, maybe three, and uh, something starts to click. Yes. You know, so that's how it works. So thanks again, Charlie. Yes, it's thank you, pleasure, Keith. Man. Thank you. Um, and as I said, you know, good luck and congratulations. Thank you very all much. Right.